going? Hey, everybody. Happy Empowered Hour. This is Monday, and we are going to be starting summer tomorrow. Today is June the 20th. I apologize. We are not on our Facebook Live, but we will be recording this and posting it live. So we are so happy to have with us this evening Maria Fontana, all the way from the great state of New Jersey. Welcome, Maria. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I am super excited. I can't wait to share all this juicy stuff with you guys. Thank you, and I'm honored. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you. And we're so happy that our friend Christine introduced us to you. And it's myself and Rosemary tonight with you. Um, I just want to dive in because at the beginning, before we went on live, you had told me some of your background, that you had a salon at 19 years of age. And then you had a, you, you mentioned a slew of other businesses. And I'm thinking, whoa, this girl is a true entrepreneur. Because what I feel is that we, a lot of salon owners, like technicians, they have an entrepreneurial seizure and they want to open up their own business, but they end up opening a hobby. Mm -hmm. They don't end up opening a business. And really, they are entrepreneurs because they had that, they had that entrepreneurial seizure and they're like, oh, my God, I want to open my own space, create my own vibe, do it the way I want to do it. Right. And then they still stay stuck in that hairdresser mentality. And what you said to me was you had said, I couldn't follow the rules. So I wanted to create my own space. Can you talk a little bit about that because I always love that image of, you know, you see these memes, all these little kids on a ballet bar and they're all like popper, you know, <laughs> they're posing properly. And then there's this one upside down. And we always say that's the hairdresser or that's yeah. the creative. Mm -hmm. And um, there is currently an ad on TV. And I think it's for teaching your kids how to, you know, manage their money. And it, I forget what bank it is, but it said, you know, this daughter wants to become a professor and this daughter wants to become, I forget something else, but they named a profession. And this one is the dreamer and she's the artist. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, why can't they say this one's the artist and she's still finding her way, but they called her a dreamer, you know? Yeah. So, so it's like, I know that I'm throwing a lot at you there, but like, no, that's okay. really spoke to me in that creative concept of being the creative and not wanting to follow the rules, but mm -hmm. tapped in there was this unbelievable entrepreneur. Yes. So go at it. So, you know, it started early on. I, um, I was super brilliant in high school. I was super smart, but I knew I didn't want to conform. That was my biggest thing. I just couldn't conform with um, dumbing down my, my skills, my magic, my my light, like my personality. I'm a people person. I love people. I love talking with people. I love helping people, healing people. This, this was something just powerful in me from a child. So I um, took the direction of vocational school. You know, I took cosmetology in high school and how my journey started was my mother was not happy. I come from uh, first generation Italians. And again, I'm not talking smack about my family. I'm speaking the truth. So you guys, uh, by the end of this, uh, interview, you'll understand everything I'm saying, because it all makes sense. So my mother was devastated. Oh my God, the mindset was you're going to be a hairdresser. That's horrible. You think I told her I was going to go be a prostitute. It was insanity. She was very angry, very upset, totally embarrassed, but I didn't give a damn. I was like, you know what? This is the quickest path for me to be able to start a business and be creative. It wasn't that I wanted to be a hairdresser. I was like, oh, this looks good. I'm going to try this and I'm going to make it be good at it. Fast forward, I was really good at it because I was focused and I had a clear vision. So I was working three jobs at three salons in North Jersey from all through beauty school, shampooing on Friday nights. I mean, I worked my butt off and I, I had a wonderful, I worked on the corner. My first job was I used to walk to work, a salon on the corner that I could walk to. And the woman was a really wonderful woman who I was a hard worker, so she took me under her wing. And back in the day, because I'm doing this 37 years, it was wash and sets, wash and blow dry, you know, root touch ups. It, you know, it was just, it was a very specifically weekly steady, the steadies we call them. 
So I was a really vigilant worker. Fast forward, this woman said to me, I want to go on vacation for three weeks to Europe. Will you watch the salon? That was it. The minute I got a taste of it, I was really good at it. I took great care of her clients. I mean, I was like 17 years old. I took care of her customers. I took care of her business. So I must have been, in hindsight, I must have been pretty damn amazing for this woman to entrust her business to me, right? Um, I did a great job. When she came back, I said, you know, Tony, I want to open my own salon. She said, okay. She's like, you got to get your experience, get your license, and you could do it. So fast forward, um, I did have three jobs. Like I said, her place was one of the jobs and I had two other jobs. I saved my money. I hustled. I saved every dime. I started to build clientele. Everywhere I went, I was building a clientele because there was no Instagram. There was no Google business. There was, it was, here's my business card. This is what I specialize in. I'd love to do your hair. (laughs) You know, like that, that was how it worked. Um, And I built my brand. And at 19, I had $15,000 saved up and I opened my first salon in 1989. I didn't know what I was doing business-wise, but my one client worked at the bank. She was a banker. My other client was an attorney. My other client was an accountant. So I would gently pick their brain and get help as I was doing their hair. And I started my vision and, um, and in that first year, I hit six figures, which in 1989, like I told you, ladies, that was a lot of money, you know, a lot of money. Wow. That, yeah, that when you, I'm, if you do the equation of what that is today, that is a ton, that's a ton of money. And it was a, yeah. How long did it take you? You said a year? That first year when I did my taxes, my account was like, oh my God. And there was no credit cards back then. No. Mind you. There was, it was all cash and checks. Like, you know, it was a whole different vibe. It was just a different world. And I really didn't realize how successful I had become. But what I knew was this, and this is so important for everyone, no matter what you're doing. I had a clear vision of what I wanted my life to look like. I was a visionary. So I had candles. I had beautiful stuff in my salon. I had coffee. I always had dessert. This was before anybody was doing this stuff. We offered, you know, nice hand massages when they were getting shampoo, just stuff that I'm trying to remember because it's so long ago that nobody else did. You know, then I remember uh, when cream color started, I made sure I got that first class from Goldwell. I'll never forget it. And then Colorons came out, Demi Color. And I, you know, I went to Italy for two months and trained how to do foils. Like I was the only one doing foil highlighting. It was always being a step ahead, but the game changer was this. I always treated everybody with love, like kindness, compassion, even the pain in the asses. The minute, like I just had a gift for really loving people. And I still have clients. I only have two left because either they died or moved out of the state. I still have two people that still come to me from when I was 19 years old. So you know, I hear a lot in, in the world now, divorce the client, do this, there's that. But I think, I think the future is going more towards loving more, attracting the right person that fits for you, the person that you can connect with. I know I'm getting off topic here. Oh, no, 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 no. I think this is, this is perfect because I absolutely detest the messages that are being put out there at the moment about what you just said divorcing your client and just say no and it there's a way to say that without being because to me when you choke when you choke a life like that's a lifeline whether it's a client or yeah once you choke it you are stopping abundance you know you are you, you are cutting that off. It's like, it may be not the client for you, but let's find who that client can go to. You know, right. I I believe in that 30, the 34th Street, that miracle, I forget the name of that movie. Yes, it's like miracle. A, miracle on 34th Street. I mm-hmm. can't sell it to you, but let me find you the right person for you. you know, Absolutely. That Absolutely. That is the way it goes. And I, yeah, there's a couple of things that I'm seeing at the moment and people are talking mm. about, you know, tipping and like a lot of people feel that you know when they go out in their own space why isn't the client giving me gratuities and I'm like because you're now a business owner that you've been bragging about that you're so happy with that comes something else you know 
Right. So don't be negative about it. You know, I no, I love where you're going with this conversation. Rosemary, do you have a question for Maria? I do, but maybe you can continue talking because I have a very barky dog, right? Okay. And look, my dog barks too. That's why I'm in my office because Luna would have been torturing us. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so you what I wanted about to that experience, Maria, and you spoke yeah. about that, you know, you had that vision and where you're at now is mm -hmm. in that space. Mm -hmm. And you and you coach salon owners on their exit strategy. So you did say you help them start, monetize, and exit. Yeah. So it's basically starting. I have some clients who are just starting out, which is so important to get that foundation right. And my my technique is simplified, simplifying to multiply. There's so many great mentors out there. I mean, I could rattle off a name of 20 people that are colleagues that I adore. And, and um, I'm going to touch on one thing real quick that's important that I do in all my businesses. It's collaboration. Mm -hmm. Now, this is another huge mistake. I know everyone watching this are salon owners. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying you're making these mistakes, but I do see it in the industry. Everyone in my area, always, I was always friends and supportive of every single salon owner in my area. I go to other salons to get a blow dry. I will refer to other salons. I have had other salons call me because my the products I use are all organic. Maria, oh my God, I ran out of 20 bond. Do you have any? Absolutely. Come get it. Like, it's all about collaboration too. Like, I don't believe in the mindset of, of tapping out and that that tight, um, you know, anger and competition. I believe if you're showing up 100% in alignment with what you want for your business, your competition's irrelevant yeah. because everyone's got their magic. And if you love me, you might not like Sue down the street, but maybe you like Sue better because she's better aligned for you. And that's great. Yeah. And, yeah, and no, the collaboration is definitely key. And the four right. of us here, it, it's all collaboration. And we all come, we're all in different parts of the industry at the moment. Yes. But the, I, collaboration is what the growth has been. You know, through Absolutely. collaboration, you can learn so much more. And that's why we actually have a, a membership where we have, you know, salon owners and leaders in. And that's what we talk about. We talk about that power of collaboration and empowering, yes. empowering, not pulling anybody down. Right. Like, Empowering. So important. Yeah. It's so important because even in, you know, we were talking about the exit strategy. So this is a topic everyone's so afraid of. When I talk about it, they're like, well, why are you talking about that? Well, because there's launch, there's growth, and then there is an exit strategy. You know, I created my exit strategy thinking, what's my plan B as I get older? What's my plan B when I want to sell my business? What's my plan B? And it was packaging up my brilliance, my gifts, my intuition, the things that people are always like, can I pick your brain? How did you do that? Can I pick your brain? How did you survive this? Can I pick? And I thought, oh my God, there it is. So I created my Maria Fontana Consulting. And it's basically packaging up my brilliance of 36 years of entrepreneurial experience and not minimizing major personal development and harnessing my intuition. It's its a package deal. You get the whole package when you work with me. Oh, no, I love that because I think, you know, if you, if you don't grow, you die, right? And daily, that journey, I think when you become a leader or a salon owner, it's, you know, we, we say that all the time, mm -hmm. power, like it, you have to influence your team but if you're not growing, they're going to either like high performance stylists will not stay with the salon owner that's not growing. And that growth is not just financially. It's that emo you, you said emotional intelligence earlier. It's like mm -hmm. that personal growth development. And, yes. um, you know, Rosemary and I were talking earlier this morning and all you can do is you're responsible for you you're not responsible you're responsible to others but you're not responsible for others so right. if they have a reaction you can't take that person right you know you can't control them but that comes with personal growth and development right 
And a lot of people, again, I started talking about this on my podcast, Maria Fontana Show. I have a YouTube channel. I have interviewed some of the most amazing, beautiful industry icons on my show. And I'd love to have you ladies on too. And there are always discussions. And I always bring up that our industry has been a little stuck. And I see now you ladies and so many other people, we're starting to talk about it. And when I started to talk about it, people were afraid of it. Personal development simply means shifting the way you look at things, thinking differently, speaking differently, um, changing your energy and, and healing your past wounds because we all have crap. If you're going to tell me you're not bringing crap into your business, I don't believe it. <laughs> you know, I don't believe it. This is what I talk about in my books. You know, I've lost everything. I've become very wealthy and lost it all, including my home. My, I lost everything at one point because of a bad divorce. But guess what I did? I picked up myself and I'm like, okay, start over. Because if you have the drive and the mindset and the will, you can do anything you freaking want. So I don't believe staying stuck in like, poor me. Well, there's no customers. There's no that. Baloney. Baloney. It's a choice. You're choosing. Yes, there's always going to be. I, I've been in business 37 years, girls. I've been through the recession. I've been through wars. I don't even know. I've been through it all. Like, I'm still standing. I mean, I, I went through like everything. But if you work on yourself and how you think every day, you know, people say to me, you know, Maria, when you, when you talk to me, your eyes just pull me in. Like, but that's because I show up with my heart, my soul, my gut. I'm not just talking crap. I'm talking to you from my soul. Right. And that is so powerful. So powerful. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. I can feel it. You remind me a lot of, uh, I'm probably going to say his name wrong, Joel Manby. Joel Manby. Mm. And he is a, um, he, he has this program that is called Love Works. Love Works. Mm -hmm. And it, it's all in regards to talking about how the business and how when you're running a business, it's so important to stay engaged and connected. And you can see how you speak so much through the eyes <laughs> and the soul of a barking dog. Uh, <laughs> that's okay we love barking dogs yeah, even the dogs now everyone's trying to suppress the dogs oh put it like don't don't let the dog bark really yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> who it's cares like, yeah. that they yeah. bark <laughs> yeah it's like the sky don't stay blue you know it's like <laughs> right. um, you speak so beautifully through the heart and and i love that because you know a lot of times people at the salon as a as a stylist behind the chair like i have front desk personnel who tell me sometimes they're like Rosemary, you give so much to your clients and you talk too much, you should charge more. And I said, I don't do it because I'm looking for more money. I like, I care. Like I, I truly care. Even the ones that drive me up the wall sometimes, I truly care to be there because I want to be present for them because I'd only treat them like I would want to be treated. You know, right. if, if I was, the shoe was on the other foot. And they're like, yeah, but you should charge for that time. And I said, no, no, no. But no. that's the differentiator. You see, that's what a lot of salon owners, like when they start working with me, the first thing I see is that there, it's tunnel vision. There's a lot of tunnel vision and it's self-worth. Like to a lot of salon professionals, unfortunately, they don't feel worthy enough to connect in love. They're afraid. They, they hold back the egos involved. Yeah. But the, the truth of the matter is when you level up how you show up yeah. and you're in a good mood. I'm not saying be fake, but I'm saying leave your crap at the door. Yep. It, it's, it's just mind blowing how everything changes. The level of money changes. See, I believe in energy and abundance and the law of attraction and how we show up and how we connect. All of that is truth because energy and money love speed. So when you put your best energy out there, other human souls feel it. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is part of doing business the way I feel intuitively doing business. It's so important. So important. Yeah. Yeah. I would love for you to talk about the books and how each book came up into the part of your life, uh, you know, and the title and, and how it, it's kind of transformed you and created you to be some of the uh, number one bestsellers. Yeah. Yeah. I have two number one bestsellers. I'm super proud of that because um, I have actually posters in my salon that my clients see. And I'm like, you know, it's always been, again, that mindset. I had to work really hard 
to break through the mindset of I'm not just a hairdresser. I'm successful. You know, and after a few years, my mother got it and she was like, oh, okay. And she just kind of piped up and that was it. We never talked about it again. She got the concept. And once I hit success and she realized, and then, you know, there was a, you know, my own journey. I had to let go of that, that wanting approval. Yeah. So fast forward. So love and light was the first book I wrote. And it, it was really me journaling about my personal development journey. So I started just writing the things that I learned in healing myself that were shocking to me, like, oh, I can say no, you know, or I can find time for myself, or I can tell people I'll think about it. Um, all these things that as I was working on myself, I'm like, I had no clue that this stuff existed because I, I had never been exposed to it. So as I started working on myself deeply, I started documenting my personal development journey. I actually started out in a blog. I just started blogging. And then I packaged up that book and I published it. I self-published that book. I didn't know how to do it, but I'm very determined. So I was like, I'm going to learn how to do this. So I figured it out, self-published on Amazon. I made the cover. I did it all. Um, in, and uh, it was called Love and Light because I believe I'm a strong spiritual person. And um, it's not about religion. It's really about spirituality and energy. And I just believe that we all have a, a profound light inside of us, our soul, our, our gut. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that love, so love and light to me means just the whole person. So I named that book Love and Light. And it was, uh, i trying to think, I think it was 10 Keys to Spiritual Transformation in Life and Business. But it's a real cool, short go-to book. You open it up, you get the message of the day. And they're just really actionable things that you could just start doing to make your life better, like right away. It doesn't take rocket science. It's not a heavy read. Um, and after I did that, I wrote business is a spiritual thing because I started to really realize as I was helping clients that it wasn't just about growing their business. It was a marriage. Everything I did became intuitive, energetic, uh, personal growth. So that marriage I just wrote about it, how important it was to put people first, to put love first, to have better relationships. Um, and really, I just talked about how I marry spirituality into my business and how it has helped me grow and can help you grow. Mm -hmm. And then the third book I wrote um, came in a different part of my life was recently uh, last, last year that was creating impact. So I shared a chapter, it was a multi-author book. I shared a chapter about reinventing myself. So I shared some deep, dark secrets about loss, about losing everything, about divorce, about really real life experiences and what it was like, but also the process I went through to rebuild my life, reinvent my, myself and my business, and, um, and then how my consulting practice was born. And then creating joy, I, I did this year. Um, I had a lot of loss this year. I lost my dog, who I adored, and I lost my dad. So um, I wrote this book about creating joy, which was really sharing that joy is an inside job, you know, and again, I share a little bit about my life story and how I learned to create joy on a daily basis, even when shit goes wrong, you know, and people laugh. I do curse, you know, like they're like, well, you're spiritual. You're like, yeah, but I'm real. Like I, I tell, I tell it like it is, you know, and, um, and so my mission for writing these books were, they're not about business. They're about personal growth and evolving and loving yourself. We're really to share with everyone in our industry and anyone willing to read that you can work on yourself simply. You can make these changes. You can choose a new career. You can choose to grow another business. You can fall in love again, whatever it is that you want you can do that, but you have to truly believe you can. And then you have to, it's not just people like, oh, I'm just going to think about this and it's going to manifest. No, you have to think it, feel it, feel what it's going to feel like, see it, and then take action because without action, nothing gets done. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's, that's that. Yeah. I love it. I love what you were saying. Now, in regards to when you were speaking about from the bit, the business perspective before we started the call, you know, like mm -hmm. when someone's starting into like the transition and you've mm -hmm. learned that exit strategy and, and 
how you help people to understand it. Not because, you know, we're trying to say to get out, but you know. No, no, but I think a plan B is always smart to have. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about that, please? I'd love that. So the plan B came from my own needs at the time. You know, I was like, what can I do to have a plan B when I don't want to do this or I can't do this anymore or it doesn't align with me anymore or just to make more money? You know, maybe, maybe I just want to add something else. And um, I started toying with this idea around 2008 when YouTube first started. So when I first started messing with this stuff, I started making YouTube videos about hair because I'm like, okay, this is the new way things are going to go online. Um, Maybe I'll make an online hair academy and I'll start teaching people how to do hair. So my first, my first attempt was into the, you know, teaching hair. But then as I evolved, of course, as you grow and evolve, I was really passionate about my personal development journey. So I went back to school while I was working full time too. And I became an integrative healing practitioner. So basically what that means is I got certified as a life coach, a transformational life coach, guided imagery, hypnosis, all these cool things that I love, these modalities. And I did it just for myself, but I realized I started to incorporate them in my business. So then I packaged the personal development, my intuition, and all the questions people were always asking me, well, how do you, how did you start a business? How did you get online? How did you do this? How did you launch your own brand? Because I have a beauty brand, Bella Max Beauty. How did you, how did you do that? So all the, how did you do this? And how did you do that? I decided I'm going to teach people how I did this. So the, the important thing is this, when you're looking for an exit strategy, it's really about I think I forget the number now, girls. I think it was either 235 billion or 335 billion. It's it, something like that. It by 2025 is the online education business. Who doesn't want a piece of that? Every single salon owner, stylist, spa owner has one gift, one magic, one skill, one experience. I'm not telling you to teach everything, one thing that you are better than anyone else at, your superpower, that you package that brilliance up and you can launch a coaching, a consulting, or an online education business like I did. And simply, I was not techie. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I became good at what I'm doing through learning, investing. I invested in a lot of mentors. Some were not so good. Some things were great, right? And I still invest in myself all the time, every day, personal development and business. And that is how I got, you know, I began to start helping people and just showing up. I started doing live videos. I went out of my comfort zone. (laughs) I started going on live. I started going on, you know, YouTube and I started just sharing what I knew. And before I knew it, it was like, wow. And then asking people in our industry, any, any service-based business. I don't only serve salon owners. I serve service-based business owners, salon owners first, and then service-based business, because they started asking me, so I didn't want to exclude them. You know, and I'm like, okay, here, this is the exit plan, because now, um, and I'm going to be documenting this. Anyone who wants to follow me, I'm going to be vlogging. I'm taking five weeks off. I go to Italy. I have a house in Italy. I leave my businesses and I go on vacation and I relax, which is another factor that everyone has forgotten. Why are we in business? Why are you working so hard if you cannot leave your business? So I'm going to be actually documenting this for fun to share the journey, how I can take a five-week sabbatical and nothing happens to me financially, how I can take a five-week sabbatical and everything continues to work. The strategy how my salon is systemized. I personally have what I call a boutique salon experience and how my consulting business works on its own that allows me to stay in Italy five weeks and have no stress, allows me to serve my clients at the highest level possible, change their lives, give them what they friggin' really need. And yet, I'm happy. I'm not burnt out. I'm not miserable. I'm not go- losing my mind. And I'm and financially, I'm stable and doing well, thriving. And if tomorrow I decide I want to sell my salon, close the doors, give it to the girls at work, whatever, it, it wouldn't change because I have plan B that's on autopilot. 
and aligned. And it sounds so scary to some people, but it really is super simple if you have a strategy and you actually take take action on it. Yeah. So so that's that's really it. Holy moly. <laughs> I know I, I, I throw a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. But. No, it's great because it's so interesting because I'm originally from Europe and it's not unusual to have six weeks vacation. Correct. Right? <laughs> and I came to America and it was two weeks vacation. I was like, pardon? Yeah. Pardon, excuse me? I said two weeks vacation. And it took me it took me a while to, you know, to kind of understand why that was. However, I do think that people are wanting more of that work-life balance because they're hearing about these, um, these entrepreneurs and you know, people that are working less. And I think that's kind of going that way. But how as a salon owner, can you do that? And I do believe in systems and processes. Mm -hmm. Like you can definitely set up your business. But when you talked about earlier that your focus and you get clear vision of what you want, how can you help people create that clarity so clarity to get what you have to get if yes. they say oh my god i want that i want six weeks okay. vacation but okay. you can put the systems in place but if you don't have the clarity right and the vision of what you want so how can people how can they start that process it's funny i'm having actually a free workshop june 27th if anybody wants to come it's called clarity and confidence it's the first step to figuring out how to how to get to these, this piece of clarity and confidence. So to me, the first piece of clarity is to be honest with yourself. Sit down with a pen and paper, good old pen and paper, and start writing down, what does the next five years look like for you? Like, where do you wanna be in five years? I don't say 10 years, I don't say long-term goals. I say five years because it's, it, it, it's bite-sized enough that you can say, okay, here's where I wanna be in five years. Like. I know where I want to be in five years. Like you have to have that, that write that down where you want to be. Then you have to write down, well, what needs to change? What's not working in my life right now? What do I need to change to acquire that? You may have to change some relationships that aren't nurturing your, your mission. You may have to lose some friends that are dragging you down and maybe not aligned with your goals. You may have to love some family members from a distance and create clear, create clearer boundaries and still love people, but maybe not waste so much time on tasks that are just wasting your time. So clarity comes from your soul. You have to ask yourself, what is it that I want? But if you don't take time to meditate, get quiet, I mean, you don't want to meditate, just sit in the friggin' dark by yourself. Go sit in, in your salon by yourself. I mean, there's times I come to my salon, I'm in my office now. I'll just sit and just be quiet with some music on and let me think. And more important than thinking, let me feel. What do I feel? Because what we feel dictates what we need. See, guys, we're operating in two different things. There's the ego and then there's the truth. Ego is good because ego helps you, you know, balance out certain things, but you have to just tell them, be quiet ego. I'm, I'm connecting with myself. Thank you for trying to help me out, but I don't want to hear you right now because that's like the fear, the don't do it. What if, what if it works? What if I can do that? What if people love me? What if people pay me handsomely for what I'm sharing? So clarity comes from you, but you have to be still and you have to ask yourself the questions and be honest with yourself. Like, don't, don't ask anyone else. Like, that's another thing. Don't share your good stuff with other people. Ask yourself because not everyone is able to support you. Not everyone's evolved enough. So when I say evolve, it just means they haven't worked on themselves where they can be like, Oh my God, Rosemary, great. You're going to open like, you know, a $2 million spa. I am so happy for you. Good for you. Like, I can honestly say that. Yes. Not everybody can do that. So you can't really share your good stuff with everyone. You have to really be around a circle of like-minded people who can support you. And clarity comes from loving yourself. Clarity comes from spending time by yourself, reflecting, 
being honest with yourself and processing any old shit that's holding you back because the old wounds, the old talk in your head. And remember guys, parents, guardians, family, relatives, teachers, people put stuff in your head that wasn't the truth. They didn't mean to, but you have to forgive them and move past that. Because everyone was doing the best they could with what they knew how at that moment. So once you can release that, and if you need help, like if you're not sure and you're stuck, hire a life coach, hire a therapist, hire, you know, a, any kind of transformational expert to help you clear that out. Once you clear that out, then the clarity comes because if you have all this dust in front of you, it's a little bit more challenging. Yeah, no, I think it's so good because people, they ask people who are at the same level that they are or may have not have achieved those dreams that they want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're asking somebody who's not at that level of awareness or doesn't have what you want to achieve, yes, they don't know how to get it. And I, I say that all the time when people are sitting in the staff room in our salons and they're not asking the owner the question they want, they're asking their peers you're going to get an answer that's not necessarily going to be the best answer. So I love that encouragement. Go out and yeah. get yourself somebody who can think yeah. with you and help right. you think, you know, going right. into the future. And, and well, I think another thing too, a lot of people are forgetting, well, be really nice to yourself. Like oh, be kind yeah. and compassionate to yourself. It's okay. We don't all have it figured out. But if you find, I believe in finding mentors health, wellness, mental, psychological, business. I have three to four mentors at all times. Whatever it is that fits into your lifestyle at that time. I'm not saying, and, and nowadays there's an abundance of Insta coaches, people selling a lot of BS online. Just be prudent, be really discerning and make sure that you talk to these people. Make sure you get a recommendation. Don't just hire someone because you saw an ad and it looks like they're going to make you rich in two days. It's not true. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Hello, that's the truth. Yeah, talk to salon owners who've gone bankrupt. Hello here. <laughs> right, to, right. Yeah, it's like, that's the experience that I want to save people from, you know? Um, yeah. That's why I always say when these like 22, no offense to 22 year old no. business and life coaches, but, you know, unless you've, being reincarnated from somebody who's had a life experience and you, you're very aware of that. I don't think there's a lot that you can teach. Yeah. Well, it's age. the online space, Ma. So, I, you know, again, being in the online space, well, I've, I've seen a lot of people get burned. So yeah. there's a lot of, I call them Insta coaches. They take a course and now everyone's, you know, labeling themselves as experts. So again, as a, a smart consumer, just do your research, get referrals, connecting your network and have a consultation. I offer a free consultation. Sometimes it even goes to 90 minutes because I give 150%. Sometimes all they need is that consultation and it yeah. immediately will give them a shift. Yeah, no, that, that's happened. I did do that for somebody recently. They're like, how much, it, what's my bill? And I'm like, I don't want any money for this. I'm so, this is not my, this is not my area of expertise, but I know enough to be able to point right. you in the right direction right. and you're happy with that no I love being I love being a resource like you like I like yes. being a resource for people Rosemary we do we're coming up to 45 minutes of our time which I can't believe it but Maria we what is your podcast called again is it Maria Fontana it's the Maria Fontana show yes you can find me on any of your favorite podcast channels I've had amazing guests on there I mean I could rattle off all the names, all the industry experts, just everyone showing up with a big heart, sharing, sharing their best stuff. Um, I talk about personal development, healing, energy, business growth. Those, those are my passions. And, and I marry all of them. And, and uh, I'm happy to do it. And I'm not going to stop. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love it. I just, I want to meet you in person. I absolutely I know. Love I can't it. wait. Yeah, yeah we would yeah. Be, be so fun. Absolutely. So Rosemary, we do have one last question to ask that we ask all our guests. So I'm going to pass this one over to Rosemary and give her the pleasure of asking. Okay. So the last question that we ask all our guests is, what does an empowered leader mean to you? How do you define it? 
So an empowered leader, in my opinion, is someone who leads with their heart, someone who has a vision and believes in sharing all their good stuff openly. They don't, they don't keep it to themselves. They openly share what they know. There's no judgment and there's a lot of collaboration. To me, that's an empowered leader. Um, I personally was never a great boss because I was too, too nice, too good. So I had to work on myself too, on my leadership skills, on how to balance that out, right? In my early years, because I was a kid, but an empowered leader is really someone who shows up with an open heart and gives 150% and is willing to share. Um, real quick, I've had team members when, when they want to leave, they want to open their salon, I help them do it. Town away, two towns away, doesn't matter. It's okay. I'm not interested. There's no competition. That's an abundance mindset and an abundance reality. So an empowered leader shows up in abundance all the time. I love that. I love that. I feel like you need to have a, uh, a logo. <laughs> yeah, actually, and yeah, I love that. An abundance leader, an empowered leader shows up in abundance. I love that. We yeah. are going to actually do our, some quotables. And once we get them all done, we'll definitely share your quotable with you and we'll post it for you. But um, we Thank absolutely you. love that. Such a pleasure. And yeah, I just love your energy. And obviously mm -hmm. that's why you do what you do in that energy manifestation and working on your personal development because we that's what we believe. If you can't work on yourself personally, how the hell can you work on your business? You really can't. And I can tell you from, again, owning over 10 salons, uh, you know, 10 other different practices. It's not just the salon business. It's any business. You yeah. can only grow as much as you're willing to grow yourself yeah. because you will get capped. You'll get stuck. You won't be able to evolve. You'll, you'll be in turmoil and you'll be in the groups online, bitching and moaning, thinking you're going to find a solution when the solution's inside yourself. That's it. If you don't go within, you're going to go without, right? That's right. I That's love right. it. Have a great evening, Maria. Pleasure. Thank you, sweetheart. You. We Thank you for having you. me. Yeah, Thank it was you. our pleasure. Thank you, Rosemary. Good night and God bless everybody. And we will make sure that um, we put all Maria's contact information in sure. our chat. All right. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good Take vacation. Care. Bye. Oh, thank you. Have a good time. Bye. Thank you.